Hello, I'm Cindy Garcia. You're watching GBC World News, broadcasting from Houston, Texas. Thank you for joining us. People around the world, including the U.S., Turkey, Egypt, Iraq, and the U.K., are celebrating the news that Libyan rebels control much of Tripoli. GBC World News has more on the collapse of Muammar Gaddafi's regime. Libyans in the Turkish capital Ankara destroy pictures of Muammar Gaddafi. They are celebrating the Libyan rebels' seizure of Tripoli. The rebel fighters swept into the centre of the Libyan capital late on Sunday night as Gaddafi's forces collapsed. Yes, we are extremely happy after achieving this victory. We have been raising the flag in celebration of this historical occasion. Everyone is really happy and celebrating this great victory, which we struggled for a long time to achieve. In Cairo, the Egyptian army stands guard over the Libyan embassy. Libyan opposition supporters are demanding the replacement of the green flag of the regime with the flag the rebels have adopted. Uh, so as an individual, my demands would be first and foremost, uh, since I'm here in Cairo, for the Libyan embassy in Cairo to lower its flag <coughs> and raise the flag of the independence, and for the Egyptian military council to recognize the Mejus Intiqali. This would be my first demand. Two of Gaddafi's sons have been captured by the rebels, though the whereabouts of Muammar Gaddafi himself is unknown. In Baghdad, one Iraqi says he believes this is the last stage of the battle to liberate Libya. This is an important and a strong step for the rebels, and at the same time, it's a step toward liberation to get rid of the Libyan dictator who ruled Libya by sword and fire. There were also scenes of jubilation amongst the Libyan population of Manchester, England. They're chanting uh, joyful uh, slogans and stuff like that because we've been suppressed for 42 years. Now we're tasting the freedom. The freedom of speech, the freedom of movement, the freedom of everything. A Libyan rebel spokesman says the rebels now control over 95% of Tripoli, including the Libyan state radio building. Meanwhile, Britain is urging Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi to stop fighting without conditions after troops loyal to him stage a last-ditch resistance in the capital, Tripoli, on Monday. Prime Minister David Cameron cut short a summer holiday to return to London to discuss the fast-changing events in Libya. In a statement outside Downing Street, Cameron says Gaddafi must give up fighting immediately. His regime is falling apart and is in full retreat. Gaddafi must stop fighting without conditions and clearly show that he has given up any claim to control Libya. Britain and NATO are dealing with Libya's National Transitional Council. Cameron advised the rebels not to indulge in reprisals. The prime minister says he would like to see Gaddafi face justice, but that his fate was in the hands of Libyan rebel leaders for the National Transitional Council. Cameron adds Libyan bank assets frozen in recent months will soon be released. He is hailing the bravery of people across Libya who have been fighting Gaddafi forces and suffering bombardments from his army. Libyan government tanks and snipers put up scattered last-ditch resistance in Tripoli on Monday after rebels swept into the heart of the capital, cheered on by crowds hailing the end of Gaddafi's 42 years in power. In Israel, minor clashes erupt during an Israeli army raid in the divided West Bank city of Hebron. GBC World News has the details from the divided city. Israeli troops conduct a raid in the West Bank city of Hebron. An army spokesperson says it began as a routine operation, but when rioters hurled rocks at security forces, the soldiers were forced to respond with riot dispersal means. Israeli troops also cordoned off a house in Hebron and opened fire while conducting an arrest, wounding at least one Palestinian. Around 800 Jewish settlers live among 30,000 Palestinians in the areas of Hebron under Israeli control and tensions between Israelis and Palestinians often turn violent in a divided city. The Syrian president says unrest in Syria has become more militant in recent weeks, 
But as GBC World News reports, Bashar al-Assad says he is not worried. In an interview with Syrian state television, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad said he was not worried about his country's security threat and he expects to hold parliamentary elections. This might seem dangerous regarding your question about the security perspective. However, we can deal with this and we have begun to make achievements recently. We won't announce now because it's necessary for us to succeed with maintaining security. However, I am not worried about these events. Assad offered no specific timetable for an election. There is no approximate timetable this week. Over the next few days until Thursday, I believe we must, regarding the law of political parties, put together the committee concerned with accepting the proposals of political parties. This committee is composed of a judge, the Minister of Interior, and three other independent figures. Assad's appearance comes as waves of protests sweep through Syria, which has been documented by amateur video, which cannot be independently verified by Reuters. The United States and European allies are calling on Assad to quit. The UN says his crackdown has killed around 2,000 people. <laughs> You're watching GBC World News. I'm Cindy Garcia. When we return, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge go on sale, at least their mini versions. We explain right after this break.